So the next layer in our Vanitas painting is going to be our color glazing layer over top of our grisaille underpainting. So for color glazing, we are going to build our, our color through transparent glazes or see-through layers of paint. The goal is to make your paint transparent enough that the value of the grisaille will show through. So your paint is going to be see-through, that way we can still see all the, the work that you put into making your highlights and shadows in that underpainting layer. Now, uh, to make the paint transparent, you will be using, if you're using oil, your classic medium we mixed earlier, which is the um, Gamsol, your linseed oil, and your um, Damar varnish. Or if you're using acrylic paint, you should be using your uh, slow dry two part medium, which is your retarder and matte medium. You're also going to need a large dry flat brush. That's the one that is kind of got that flat square end, a cotton cloth of some kind. We could use a washcloth, an old t-shirt, that kind of thing. Cotton cloth works best, uh, especially when we start doing some of the blending. If you're in acrylic, you should also have a second wet with water dry cloth because you might have to make some corrections. So having that wet cloth nearby will be very helpful. Okay, so here is our black and white grisaille underpainting. So you can see uh, with mine, I started off with a um, dark background, but I've actually decided to use a little bit lighter paint over top. Um, one of the reasons I decided to do this is glazing over a dark background actually has a very kind of vibrant glow to it. And I kind of thought about that ahead of time. So you can always change up your colors when you get to this layer. The other thing is that, um, you know, as you're working, you can see I've kind of sped things up. Um, you want to start in a small corner to test your color and wipe it off quickly if it's not correct using your wet cloth if you're in acrylic or you can actually just use uh, a dry cloth if you're using oils. You can see here I'm actually taking the cloth to remove some of the paint just so slightly because I wanted more of the black to show through with that um, the uh, cotton cloth. You should also have a large dry flat brush. You can even use that um, two inch gesso brush for this actually. As you can see, I'm using it right now to kind of blend and smooth out my layers. It removes paint, but it also removes all the brush strokes and makes things look really kind of nice and clean as I go. Uh, typically it's a good idea for this style of painting to start with the background because the background uh, especially if you're blending, you want to kind of be able to go over your edges and then clean them up using that wet cloth if you have acrylic. Or as you can see, if I'm using oil, I can dip it in a tiny amount of Gamsol and remove any areas that I've covered over. So that way I can still go back in and um, clean things up uh, where I needed. So I went over the edges a little bit and I'm removing back off the paint as I go. Um, that's why it's a nice idea to start with the background. That way you don't have to kind of needle in along the edges. Now for this layer, don't worry about those small details. We're going to add in more contrast layer. You can see here, I've got a little pool of my um, three part medium. I'm using oils this time for this demo. I add my paint in, I get the transparency that I like, apply it with that brush. And then I'm gonna take a second dry brush and I'm gonna kind of blend and smooth it out. Or actually I'm using a cloth here as well, but you can use a cloth or a dry brush as you can see um, here. I'm applying the paint. I can kind of blend it out and remove things with that second dry brush. It's important that the brush is dry and not wet because a wet brush will remove and kind of make it smeary. If it's 
completely dry, it's going to actually blend and kind of spread the color out. So the dry part is important. When I go to do my glazing, I try to have like three or four dry brushes ready to go. That way I have them um, there to blend. Um, and once you use them too much, obviously they become wet from the paint and you got to switch to a new dry brush. So that's kind of important to have a few dry flat brushes ready to go on hand. Like I said, as you go, we're concentrating on kind of overall color. This is not your final layer. We're going to do one more layer next week after this, where you're going to add in all those kind of finishing details. I'm just kind of focusing on pulling in the overall color. Now you might want to think about having two different colors for each little area. Like I mixed up a, a slightly darker pink and a lighter pink to help fill in my flower with. That way I've got a couple different colors that I can pull together as I go. The same thing with my crystals. I've kind of mixed up a couple different purples so I can pull those purples in as I go because you know, even though the crystals are purple, there's a couple very distinct purples in there. So I want to have them ready as I'm starting to pull the paint in. Same thing with my hands. I mix up kind of a darker shadow skin color. I mixed up a lighter one. That way, as I start to pull it in, I can kind of put them in their spots and then use that uh, dry, flat brush to pull them all together. You can see I'm kind of putting my slightly different skin tones in there and then I'm taking my larger flat brush to blend them out together. As I'm going, like I said, this isn't my finishing layer, so everything doesn't have to be perfect, but I want to kind of get everything generally in place. That way I can come in and focus on those fine details for my final layer.